Hey guys, today I'm back for another DC Multiverse review, and today we're taking a look at the McFarlandToys.com exclusive Gold Label Scarecrow from Arkham Knight. So let's get a better look at that packaging, shall we? So here's a nice close look at the packaging. We've of course got the contents of the packaging right there. You have the DC Multiverse logo right there. Scarecrow right there. Gold Label collection right there. Making it sure this is gold label. We have the multiverse logo right there. Name of the character. Obviously, this is Scarecrow. And then the source material on the back, which is, uh, I believe it's a poster for the game. It's not a still from the game. I'm pretty sure it's some kind of promo picture or something like that. And then on top, we, of course, have Scarecrow from Arkham Knight. Then DC Multiverse right there. McFarland Toys, social media is right there. And then we, of course, have Scarecrow from Batman Arkham Knight. DC Multiverse logo right there. Then on the top, we have nothing. On the bottom, we have the legalese and the barcode, which you guys won't need since this is a McFarland Toys store exclusive which you cannot find in stores so you don't really need this but uh all right guys let's get this dude out of the packaging and here we are with our new gold label scarecrow out of the packaging and before we take a look at the figure we're gonna of course take a look at the character at the character's accessories which are you guessed it the hockey puck, DC Multiverse hockey puck with the DC logo right there, peg hole right there, and then the three little embedded circles on there. Interesting. Means this is an older figure than some of the other figures we've taken a look at. And then, of course, we get the card, which just has a smaller picture of the art on the back of the box with Scarecrow from the source material, Batman Arkham Knight. And then on the back, we have real name Jonathan Crane. And then it pretty much gives a decent rundown on Scarecrow's gag, which is he uses fear toxin to give Batman hallucinations and stuff like that. And he's a real psychological threat to Batman, not really much of a physical threat, unlike let's say Bane or Solomon Grundy, or Clayface, or Rachel Ghoul, or all the, well, Rachel Ghoul's kind of both. But anyway, he's much more of a psychological threat for Batman. That's why he's skinnier, of course. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much, um, they pretty much got it nailed for Scarecrow right there. And let's uh, turn off the turntable and let's get him in for a closer look. So th this is, of course, the McFarland Toys dot com exclusive which means that this is a variant of the normal release and i took a look at the normal release because of course these one the store exclusives are much more hard to find on like second rate markets like ebay etc and i just realized that the normal figure is really just a black figure with the vials colored in it doesn't have as much uh, different browns and all that stuff. It's just a black figure with orange tubing and not even like the th cool thing that they did with the eyes here either. It's literally just a black figure with, with yellow vials. And I thought, I was like, man, that is really bland and that really sucks. And I, I already uh, missed my opportunity to get it on the actual site. So, found this guy for a decent price on eBay, and uh, managed to uh, get here in a matter of days. It actually got here right as the day after the Headless Horseman got here. So, pretty quick, considering the fact that I ordered this guy before the Headless Horseman. So, take that what you will. Anyway, off topic. But, um, I love the stitching and the bag kind of textures. It's really nice. It You can definitely feel the stitches 
when you're like running your hand over the hood and stuff like that and overall it's just the stitching looks great it's fantastic i absolutely can't get it get over the stitching and how good it looks and then also i love this noose right here because it very much reminds me of of course his original suit in asylum but more importantly, the redesign for Batman New Adventures, where it arguably has the scariest scarecrow design I have probably ever seen, which is this like Southern preacher kind of look with like a very wide brimmed hat and it's got shadow over his face and he's got, um, he's got the noose too. And it really looks terrifying. Even for a kid's cartoon, it looks terrifying. But um, I love the nod to the animated series with the noose. At least I think it's an animated series nod. I'm not sure. But of course we have the um, glowing eyes, which I think is a really cool touch. I really like the glowing eyes. Makes him really pop, especially when he's looking straight on at you. It gives you a very sinister kind of look. It looks like he's going to do something. And then, of course, the orange files. We've got the, uh, of course, the with with the Arkham games. He has like a needle gauntlet because he just stabs you. Like he kind he kind of like does like what Wolverine's what Wolverine does with his claws. Instead, he like just goes and 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 injects you with the fear toxin, and he gives you like four doses. It's kind of insane, but. All of the vials look like they've been painted right. I don't see any paint swatches on my particular figure, which is nice to see. Of course, we have the spare vials all over him and the supply around on his body. And then, of course, the canister on his back. Now we've got a lot of browns. And I love the way that this... Uh, trench coat thing is kind of sculpted is sculpted to be kind of windswept so the way he's standing there it looks he looks more dynamic than if it was just flat and then of course we have the elephant in the room his uh, leg brace from his fight with killer croc and i'm pretty sure that's a bite mark because it doesn't it, it it doesn't look like it's part of the sculpting of the articulation anything like that so i'm pretty sure it's, that's just a, like a bite mark from croc at the end of asylum where croc grabs him and you don't see him again until night where he makes small can small um hints of his return in city and stuff like that but pretty sure that's just a bite mark from croc then of course we have the tattered clothing the cl tattered pants with the pant even though that needs more paint right there because that's obviously a uh, skin tone right there need a brush up on the skin tone right there then down to the boots which uh the boots look really nice got the good laces right there and like i said the brace she looks very nice i like how they did the brace here so you could still get the articulation out of the foot even though I'd much rather have it just be connected and have a hinge be as the, like, you know how the end of the brace is like the hinge? Just have a little attachment right under there and have that also be a hinge so you could still have one interconnected piece instead of this weird looking piece when it's obviously supposed to be connected right here. I don't know why they didn't do that, but not my figure, so kind of stuff that doesn't really matter, of course. And then, of course, you got the tubes going into the canisters and all that good stuff. And, of course, he has this open, weird open hand going on right here where you can kind of do something with that. I'll figure it out. Oh, he could do like a shh. Oh, that's scary. That's scary. I hate it when villains do that. But uh, anyway, 
Let's get on to the articulation segment. We, of course, have the ball jointed head. It's a little more restricted this time because of the hood and the mask and everything like that, but he can move up about, he can look straight forward, he can look a little down, then he can rotate side to side, do a bit of head pivot, not a lot, very restrictive in the head. Noose is probably a part of it, but it's a cool feature, so I don't knock it against them. And then we do have the butterfly joints in the arms right there. And then of course we have the bicep swivel, which is very good right there. Double jointed elbows, which isn't the worst one we've seen because it's all one color, but it's definitely better than a lot of the other ones that we've seen so far in this stretch of reviews here. Then we of course have Where is, I'm trying to figure, where's the hinge at? Oh, there it is. So the hinge is right there. It only goes in about that far and straight back out. And so for the wrist right here, we have, of course, the hinge like so, which can ultimately be corrected to the roll of the dice hinge. I love these ball joints right here. I think they're fantastic. And then with the diaphragm, you've got a little, you've got some hindrance from the tubes right there. So he doesn't really bend forward a lot. He can bend pat backward pretty well, but it's largely just to get him to stand up straight. So if you're looking for him to be like punched by Batman or anything, you're not gonna get that with this figure. And then of course, we have the thigh swivel right there, or very small amount of thigh swivel. And then for the legs are different. So this the left leg has a single hinge, which follows the brace. And then of course the ball jointed ankles right there with no ankle pivot. But the right leg has the standard legs where it's thigh swivel right there, double jointed knees, which look pretty good because of course, all one color, you can't really screw up all one color. And then of course we have the ball hinge joints that go down like that, up like so. And then you have the ankle rocker with, of course, the ankle rotation at the top of the ball joint. But overall, really solid articulation, some hindrances, but the aesthetic overall gives him the edge in that department. More of the aesthetic, less articulation for this and guy. And here we are with all of the rogues that have been released in the Arkham design so far. We of course have the Arkham City Wave Rachel Ghoul, Arkham City Penguin, Arkham City Grundy, the Grundy Bath. Then in the back we have the Arkham Asylum Croc, then the Arkham Asylum Joker, the Arkham Knight, and then of course Arkham City Catwoman to blend in with our new Arkham City, Arkham, As Arkham Knight, Scarecrow, my bad. But I think they look pretty decent together, but he is more of a comic-y, looking Scarecrow and less of the realism that the Arkham kind of designs are going for. So maybe the black one could better serve your purposes in terms of like having the rogues together. But since my rogues is a mix of comic and Arkham characters, I'm pretty sure mine will be fine in the end. But uh, you guys make your decision on that and one. And here is the new Arkham Knight Scarecrow compared with more comic book looking villains. We of course have the McFarlane Hush, Talon in the back, and then of course the three Jokers, the Clown Joker, which in my opinion is the best comic Joker we've gotten yet, even though the Infinite Frontier Joker looks really good. But uh, this guy still has the cake for now, but the he looks great. He looks better with these guys compared to the more live action interpretations of him, because of course he has a brighter brown here 
in terms of the more black that you'll see on the regular release. And in the game, he has a very much darker brown than what he does have here. This is more of a nightmare kind of scarecrow we have going on. Here we have, of course, the new gold label scarecrow next to Dude Hiver and Batman. We, of course, have the Arkham City slash Arkham Asylum Batman right there. And then, of course, we have the three Jokers Batman on the right. And with the Arkham City Batman, he doesn't look as good with him because, of course, Arkham City Batman is kind of comic booky Batman. He's kind of realistic Batman, but he doesn't look as good as with the three Jokers Batman, which is, of course, more comic booky. So I'd recommend putting this guy with your more comic booky kind of characters overall. Throw him in with some much more grander scope DC villains. We have the New 52 Ocean Master, the Rebirth Zod, the New 50, I believe it's New 52 Luthor. I'm not quite sure. And then we have the classic Reverse Flash right there. And these guys look great together. These guys look fantastic together. Even though Scarecrow would never be invited into the Legion of Doom because he's not that big of a villain. But overall, he goes much better with these comic book figures than he does with more of the movie or Arkham kind of characters, which is ironic because he's an Arkham design, just not Arkham color scheme. And with that, we're coming down to the close of this review on the McFarlane Toy Store exclusive, Scarecrow from Arkham Knight, and overall, I love this figure aesthetically. He looks awesome. He's definitely the better of the two, even though I've only seen promo pics. I haven't seen him in hand yet. But like I said, this guy, in my opinion, looks way better than the other Scarecrow and definitely is going to work better with my Rogues shelf because my Rogues is an amalgam of the Arkham with the comic because you got to get everybody right. The only person we're needing now is a good Two-Face and we'll finally have the principal cast of the Rogues finally filled out. We've got Freeze coming. All we need now is Two-Face. So come on, Todd. Let's get, let's get her going. But uh, anyway, if you guys want, if you guys want a comic book scarecrow, more comic book color scheme kind of scarecrow, of course, get this guy if you want more realistic. Go with the other guy, but his paint scheme is a lot more black and not as vibrant as this guy. And that's why I got him so he'd look more attuned to the shelf as a whole. But is he necessary for your bat? If you want to do a bat rogues, of course, he's the only scarecrow that McFarlane's done. And I'd recommend him if you want a more comic booky kind of feel. But if you don't, if you're not doing a rogues or wanting a more comic book feel, don't get this guy, of course. It's all up to you. But like I said, get him if you want. And if you don't, don't. <laughs> no one's forcing you. I'm not forcing you to buy him. I'm just giving you my honest thoughts about him. But uh, yeah, guys, that's it for this review. Like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And as always, keep uh, helping and supporting each other. And uh, I'll catch you guys in the next video. And as always, keep collecting. Peace.